Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here, welcome. Today we are doing a charging video for the Hyundai Ioniq 5. First stop is to charge it with a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector. Let's check it out. All right, so we've got the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector and you can access it via the backend interface by Wi-Fi. It shows that it allows all vehicles, only Tesla, authorized Teslas only, so we've got it on all vehicles. All right, Keith's going to plug the car in. Thanks for joining us, Keith. No worries. Happy to be your charging assistant. <laughs> Once the, there there we, we go. go. Car's on, by the way. That's the battery indicator. And if I just block the sun, you can probably see it flashing, there we go. So there is some indication of the car charging away there, the blinking lights. And if I go into the car, here we go got remaining time 5 hours and 35 minutes to 100% when the car is 51% state of charge. It's only a single phase charger here at this destination so we're only getting 7.2 kilowatts which is single phase. If I scroll across to this side, the screen here it says using climate functions while the battery is charging will delay charging completion. All right, so that's good to know that the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector can charge the Hyundai Ioniq 5 when you set it correctly at the Tesla charger to all vehicles. We've also got a Zappy here at this location, so uh, we might do a little test with that as well. All right, so if you want to unplug the Ioniq 5 because it's currently locked in like that, uh, you've actually got to unlock the car from here. So unlock on the door there, boom. Then Keith can unplug. There you go, nice. All right, test two, we're gonna get the Zappy. I'm gonna do a full review of the Zappy later on. This is an old Zappy, as you can see from the, the marks around. <laughs> Generation one Zappy. Yeah. All right, so Keith's just turned the Zappy on. So, Start charging. Do you hear that, guys? Start charging from the car. There you go. So, just in short, Zappi uses uh, excess solar to charge your EV, but we'll do a full review, like I said, later on. Um, let's go back around to the car. Let's have a look. In this case, it's charging off Tesla Powerwall. There you go, off the Powerwall. It's flashing, it means it's going. It's good. Into the car now. All right, very similar graphic to the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector. At 51% state of charge, five hours and 35 to go to get to 100%. 7.2 kilowatts, so also single phase as well. All right, brilliant. Well, uh, hang around guys. We're going to do a DC fast charging test right now. So these are the 350 kilowatt chargers provided by ChargeFox at East Village Shopping Center in Zetland, just south of the Sydney CBD. They provide two hours of free parking at this shopping center and the car park opens from 5 a.m. to midnight every day. There is free parking after 6 p.m. You have to download the ChargeFox app and set up your account with payment details. These ultra rapid chargers charge up to 350 kilowatts. ChargeFox charges 40 cents per kilowatt hour, which is quite competitively priced. There is a 20% discount for NRMA members. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 has a CCS2 plug, so to access you have to remove the port cover for the DC component. Use the ChargeFox app to start charging. ChargeFox also provides an RFID card on request if you use these chargers quite often. The screen today was not in operation, but all the details are actually available anyway via the app or on screen in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The Ioniq 5 charger indicator lights flashing away shows that it is working. There are three dedicated charging spots here and they are quite well signed with the floors being painted orange. It can get very noisy when you're charging with the fans running from the power supply boxes and it actually can get quite warm as well. 
The Ionic 5's instrument cluster screen provides quite a lot of information. It shows the remaining time to both 80% and 100% respectively. As you can see, there is a huge difference. From this point, it'll take 40 minutes to get to 100% versus 14 minutes to get to 80%. I do recommend that when you're using a public charger, only charge to 80% unless you absolutely have to get to 100%. Plus, I think it's the courteous thing to do, particularly if it's a busy charging location. The car also tells you the current charging speed as well as the estimated range, which of course will increase with time as you charge. As I was charging, I took snapshots of the ChargeFox app next to the car display, and as you can see, it's fairly consistent. Maybe there's a slight lag by 1-2% to at most each time. The ChargeFox app also tells you the amount of energy consumed and also the time that has elapsed since the start of the charging session. I'm not sure how much of the energy that's consumed actually ends up in the car battery, given I assume some of the energy is lost to heat and other things. So on the Hyundai website, with a 350 kilowatt DC charger, the Ionic 5 can charge from 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes. According to the WLTP cycle, Ionic 5 users only need to charge the vehicle for 5 minutes to get 100 kilometers of range. I think that's thanks to the 800 volt battery architecture that the Ionic 5 has. It felt very quick to me when I was charging, and certainly felt faster than my previous tests with our Tesla Model 3, which has a similar sized battery at this same charger location. The final snapshot shows that I actually achieved 80% charge in 17 minutes and I started at about 20% state of charge and consumed 50.24 kilowatt hours. Again, I'm not sure how much of that actually goes into the battery as the car does not show this information. The instrument cluster screen of the car shows to get from 80 to 100%, this requires another 24 minutes. 80% state of charge will give you an estimated 319 kilometers of range. ChargeFox also charged me $20.87 for that session. I'm plugged at 81% state of charge. I wanted to prove Hyundai's claim that it would take 5 minutes to get 100 kilometers of range. So I've got two photographs here. This first photograph I took at 9.07 p.m. and the second photograph at 9.12 p.m. The first photograph shows 113 kilometers of range, while the second photo showed 215 kilometers of range. So that's an extra 102 kilometers of range in five minutes time. So that's actually quite accurate as per the Hyundai website. Now when you finish charging, it's only etiquette to of course move your car to another spot once you finish charging to allow someone else to use it. Alternatively, if you really can't get back to your car, then the other option is to check into PlugShare, that way someone can message you if they really do need to charge the car in your spot. Finally, let's compare today's charging session with Ionic 5 with a previous charging session I've done with our Tesla Model 3. So let's have a look at this graph here, and the blue line represents Tesla Model 3 charging at the same location versus the orange line, which is the Ionic 5, also at the same location from today's session. Both vehicles have a very similar battery size, given the Tesla Model 3 is a performance and has a battery of 75 kilowatt hours, and the Hyundai Ionic has a battery size of 72.6 kilowatt hours. The horizontal x-axis is the battery state of charge, whereas the vertical y-axis is the charging speed in kilowatts. Clearly I had more data points for the Tesla Model 3 than the Ionic 5, but you can see that the 800 volt battery architecture does make a big difference looking at the two plots. The charging speed stays higher for longer at the equivalent state of charge for Ionic 5 when compared to Tesla Model 3. That's why charging times are quicker for the Ionic 5. These two graphs here show the charging times for both vehicles, with orange on the left being Hyundai Ionic 5 versus the blue line on the right for Tesla Model 3. It's difficult to make any meaningful comparison given that both cars started at a different state of charge. The only thing I'll say is that the Ionic 5 on the left has a more of a linear slope to the curve because it's able to keep a higher charging speed for longer when compared to the Tesla Model 3 on the right, which tends to plateau and slow down once it passes the 50-60% to 60 state of charge mark, hence taking longer to get to 80%. And of course, being good citizens, once we unplug our cars, it's courtesy of course to place it back on the charger's cradle for the next 
person. And in the Ionic 5, we replace the flap on the DC portion of the charge port and then press the close button. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Your support is very much appreciated. Have you used a DC fast charger recently? If so, how was your experience? Leave a comment below. Until next time, stay safe and as always, happy charging.